everybody to the January 31st meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, declare the meeting open for business. The uh, first item in the agenda is warrants, right? Well, it is now. Um, the uh, We have three warrants, an accounts payable warrant for $146,712.51 a payroll warrant for $119,869.18 and a payroll deduction warrant for $29,976.22. So everybody have a chance to look at those or any questions about those? They look fine to me. That all look good to me, yeah. Okay, motion to approve all three warrants. Second, or Erica's second. I move, I so move. <laughs> Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, the minutes of last Monday. Everybody get, were they in the packet? Yes. They were good. They were good reading. There was a lot in there from the, the Eversource guys. Yes. Actually, it was a pretty juicy minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so all, uh, Motion for I move to accept the minutes. They look good. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings attended by select board members. Erica, you get to go first. So I went to that FERCOG meeting that I was like all, you know, thinking it was going to be insane. And it was like a very not controversial meeting at all. Yes. Um, so yeah. You know, essentially Conway's assessment for participation, from what I could understand from the meeting and from the minutes and the budget and everything, our assessment has actually gone down this year. Um, yes, they did approve salary increases for at 6%, I think, but the cost of living adjustment for social security is 5.9. So to me, like that's not controversial. Um, I really tried hard to channel my inner fill and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and raise some objections but i was just like nope none of this looked none of this looked objectionable to me and i think yeah. i mean you know that what we get from from the fur cog i mean it's just you have to accept that like that's you know they're like every year it's going to cost potentially a little bit more um but i think the benefits outweigh you know the cost i don't i don't know what we would do for all the partnerships that we have with the, the fur cog and the things that we get from the fur cog I don't know that we could do that, you know, as a town on our own. So um, the vote was unanimous to approve the budget. Um, I That's tried really hard. Wasn't there. <laughs> yes. I know. I tried really hard to like. I was like, God, I got to object to something. But I was like, you know, this is really not controversial. <laughs> it's, it's really. Um, so anyway, uh, we voted unanimously to approve the FERCOG budget, and um, but Conway's assessment has gone down this year, so hopefully it won't be controversial at um, town meeting. So it went down even despite the fact that we're now funding them to do the inspections, the, the health inspections. Yeah, it did. There, um, and and some you know some towns like went up dramatically, but we actually, in, from what I can tell from the budget numbers, like we actually went down from FY twenty one to FY twenty two, and we've even gone down from twenty two to twenty three. Hmm. Um, so. But, you know, like I said, this was not a controversial budget. Great. Well, yeah, I, I won't. I won't inject controversy now. Then um, <laughs> I won't call your attention to the double-digit increase in revenues that they got and how they are, 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 it should have gone down a lot more than it did. But that's okay. I won't go into any of that. A very <laughs> good. I. I, I <laughs> and I did. I did hear that. Uh, that that they were grateful that you came. And that they, they thought you acquitted yourself well. Well, I was in the car like literally the entire time, but I yeah. but I was there. I was very present yeah. and driving yeah. safely. Like, yeah, my, my one friend is like, Phil, she's kind of a little bit nicer than you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, um, but all right, it's very good, very good. So I'm I'm, I'm glad that it was a overall not not a horrible experience for you though. So no, it was. Like, Unlike my last meeting this past couple hours. Um, <laughs> so, go, go. <laughs> Bob, did you have any? Uh, well, you and I both went to the Frontier yeah. Capital meeting, and you can probably talk about that better than I. But uh, 
Okay. Uh, no, I doubt it. Short. But... Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the 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 frontier capital meeting. It did. There there are alternatives to paying for the capital costs for some of them, and we haven't really explored that as a committee, but that's one of the things that that meeting talked about, that because one of the items is repaving a tennis court, that we can, that, that's, that's right up CPA alley. And that there is an alternative to putting that on the assessment, which is going to CPA and asking for that, for that item. And um, so I don't, maybe we should put that in the agenda in the future and talk about whether we want to ask CPA for that instead of ask the taxpayers directly out of to fund it out of assessments. So um, fortunately we it's not a lot of money or we pay a sixth of any of their expenses. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that we're now we're closer to a fifth. We're up to like 18 almost 19 percent now. So wow. um yeah but uh so, and then of course I've had um, uh, contract negotiations. So the, and I don't know whether it's public yet, but the frontier, the two frontier, we have tentative, tentative agreements with our two frontier unions. So that's, that's good. I was glad to, glad to have that happen. Um, and of course that leaves the union 38 unions and we have no agreements. But, mm other than to meet again. And they're still meeting, I had to leave. But, um, and then later on was the IAs after the teachers. I just spent two hours with the teachers and then there's two hours with the IAs today. So glad, glad not to be here. Um, uh, public comments. So I see Thad and Ken, but Thad's here first, an agenda item. Um, Unfinished business. The first, um, Mass Cultural Council grant allocation for fiscal year 22. We have a grant, Mass Cultural Council grant of $5,000. It's something that we get every year. And um, <clears throat> the person that applied for it, who was that again, Veronique, that did, that did the paperwork? But whoever did it, thank you. Good job. We got the money. So now this is just to approve. This is, um, so we have a motion to approve signing for it, if everybody saw it. I second um, the motion. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so then we have. Hey, Bernie, do you know what that, what, what the grant was for? Uh, I, I, maybe you don't. Phil no, it's $5,000 and it's like our, our allotment, yeah. our annual allotment. Then, right, then, but uh, it didn't seem to mention exactly what the, cultural event was that it's going to fund no, it's it's for it's for organizations and groups and individuals in the town to apply for micro grants from, from that okay. five so we don't know yet what it's going to be spent on that, that's right. right okay yeah that's but, what I but hopefully some kind of nice artsy stuff kind of that's what it's really for yeah you, usually they usually they do some poetry stuff and some graphic art stuff actually thad probably could tell us what they have been doing it on because it's a lot of it's at the library um and um, so Thad, why don't you answer the question? Uh, so the Friends of the Library are sponsoring uh, a poetry workshop, a four-day creative writing workshop for uh, young people. Then this summer we're doing uh, two other events. Uh, one is music uh, at the library. Uh, and the other is, again, some kind of creative writing thing. Um, so what's good to know is the, the library got some funding for this. Um, it sounds like the town got another bunch of funding and we're, we're short. So the library, the friends of the library, we're going to have to show up with like a hundred bucks for people. I'll just tell the library now to go apply to the town. So we'll get some of the rest of that money. Yeah. But just so you know, the town doesn't actually get any revenue. The town gets $5,000 no. and the town disperses $5,000. Right. You don't no, it's great. Yeah. So, th so <laughs> this makes, the, I'm, I should go to every select board meeting. I can't wait to read your minutes from last week to find out how Eversource was so cool. And I just found out, oh, we can ask the town for money. So I should come to every one of these. There you go. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> um, so, so, so that's the answer. 
You're oh, you're muted, okay. Ronnie. Yeah. I thought you were saying something. Sorry. Oh. Or I, okay. Um. All right. So that brings us to the next item agenda, where Nelson and Thad are here to follow up from our January third discussion. Um. Uh, just the, so so they, they have an initiative outlined in the attached town meeting attendance plan. And so um, and I thought anybody with any kind of initiative is all that's a good thing. We want to encourage initiative. Um, and so um, they're here to tell us about their initiative and why we should support it. And the only thing that when I when I read through it a little bit, the only thing that I was just thinking about is how there are. So there are already a few individuals that have occupied some of the space in this initiative, and that that does require a, a measure of delicacy and just you know, um, sensitivity, I should say, not delicacy. So, so with that, um, so why don't you talk about your initiative? And thank you for doing this, uh, Nelson. You're you're on your iPhone in Florida. Do you want to go first or? Um. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I think I'm probably going to have turn this over to you, Thad, because I'm blipping in and out here. I've really okay. poor coverage. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, well, actually, can you guys see that? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, um, Thad, why, why don't you uh, why don't you take this and I'll try to listen in, but I'm, okay. I'm going in and out because I have gotcha. very poor coverage here. So, gotcha. Um, the the okay. challenges of uh, having to be in Florida. So um, what what we we talked with you a couple three weeks ago, and so what we wanted to do is put something in writing so you could see a little more clearly sort of what we're talking about. So um, there is sort of a uh, a general timeline. The big things are a whole issue about community outreach, about helping residents know like the date that the real meeting is going to happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, liaisoning with the select board, um, working with you, staff, trying to figure out all the different ways that we might um, maybe make the meeting more efficient, um, uh, uh, doing a sort of a warrant article light about explaining the warrants, a whole bunch of stuff like that. Then we want a media um, presentation so that we keep letting people know about the meeting and why it's important to come to it. Um, a whole idea about billboards and signs and stuff like that. And then the biggie is, at least what we've heard from residents who have children, um, gosh, let's bring back the whole issue of childcare uh, during the town meeting so that parents can come and their kids can uh, be, be taken care of. And we would coordinate that uh, same with trying to get the recreational department to not have sporting events on that same day at that same time. So there was a focus on let's bring the citizens of Conway together for the annual meeting. So our request to the select board is to kind of just say, yeah, we're with you in this. You have our blessing to move forward. Stay in touch with us. Don't do anything without being in, you know, we would want a liaison with you. So if we were about to go by signs for people's yards, we wouldn't do it until we talked to the liaison, et cetera, et cetera. But before we go get volunteers, we think we're going to identify two or three people who would actually like to work on this effort. We feel it's important to say the select board seen the general idea. They're in favor of this general idea. Which area would you like to work on? And whether that's media or um, warrants light or whatever it is, we're looking to get a little task force of four or five people. We think it's important for the select board to say, oh, yeah, you can say we're with you. And again, we wouldn't do anything without checking in with you. All right. So actually, I can give a little bit of information and new actual news about the child care option. So, yes. Uh, so, and, uh, and, and I, because I mentioned this at the last Conway Grammar School Committee meeting, and the, the school committee voted to um, support the school doing that. And the principal um, shared that the PTO or it's yeah, parent teacher, the parent teacher um, went last year, it was, de it was defunct for lack of interest. This year they had 48 people sign up for it. Um, so like, which is most of the parent. Uh, was, <laughs> so, 
and they already had their first organizational meeting and they voted to do this as their hallmark keynote project or whatever. And they're gonna be raising money for it. And Kristen, the principal, Kristen Gordon is all, she, she's like, this is, we got this. And the teachers have already met about this and agreed to support this and agreed to turn out for it um, and do it. So um, they won't take money from the town any for, for, and they will, they got it. So. And that was, I just touched base with Kristen about this a couple of days ago. She said, tell everybody we got it. So I'm telling everybody they got it. So this, what's perfect about this is, this is exactly what we envision is that they're little groups doing their bit, but the little task force would make sure it all got coordinated. And, you know, the signs would include free childcare or whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah. We, we hope that you'll say, oh yeah, those five categories make sense. Um, give us whatever information you have, but then kind of trust us to set us free. Again, we wouldn't do anything without letting you know. I feel like I trust you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pretty face on Zoom. What can I say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's one of the things I think we should like do is pr present you with a basic budget. I mean, you know, it's going to cost some money, um, you know, just to get signs and stuff. But anyway, all that, we don't think so, money is so, the problem. So, you know, so the, the signage, um, uh, the, so signage for all town business is the town clerk's uh, bailiwick. And, and, and I've actually, I mean, I, I, every single year I say, let's make more signs. And, um, and, and, we gradually have added signs, but then we changed town meeting. I know that we had a, we, we had a bunch of signs that say town meeting this, this Monday night. So, um, so we, so, so now it's, they need to say town meeting first Saturday of June. And then when you get closer, the signs that would change every year this year, it's June 4th. Um, but that date changes every year. Right. But, um, so let's get a little task force together and have a little group that works on with the town clerk. Oh, how can we help make signage? And you want signage out two months before the meeting. So people put it in their calendar instead of going, oh shit, town meetings next Saturday. I've already got 20 things on my calendar. Um, it's, it's all of that advanced notice, letting people know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. I, I worry about the sporting events, which is a great idea, but, but, each of our towns, each of our four towns, those are the towns that play sports with each other. And they've all kind of moved to having their select board meetings now on Saturdays. And so there are many Saturdays when- In town meetings, you mean? Uh, town meetings, yeah, yeah town meetings. Yeah. And, and so there are many Saturdays where all of those towns are having their meetings, their town meetings, and the kids would be playing sports. It would well, be yeah. hard not to bump in, if, 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 we, if we really did not have any sports on the days of any of our town's town meetings, that could be hard. Well, and, looking and, and the, the other thing that I thought about, you know, the transfer station, we should, we should be closing our transfer station for, trans, for, for town meeting. So, I mean, so all, all these are the kinds of ideas that we want a little working group to play with. I mean, Bob, you're right. I mean, we can, if, if we're in competition with Sunderland in a whole bunch of sports, and their town meetings on the 11th and ours is on the 4th. It's not so down the road, let's get everybody, let's get every town to have their town meeting on the same day and not have well, no, that's that FCAT wants to come and they want to be at all of the town meetings to film them and carry microphones and and put them for most of them, they put them up live. People can watch live from their homes. Anyway, and you when get two of them are on the same time, it really is a burden for FCAT. Well, you get the but, idea. Of yeah, but, yeah. But but that that for this year, the, you know, the the budget thing is going to be it's going to have its own issues. Just the you know because the way we do it is we vote on a budget and then that's the spending for that year. So this doesn't this there is no budget line item for uh, town meeting initiative or anything like that. We didn't. What about our, can we spend ARPA funds on this? I mean, this doesn't. I don't think this is going to be like a huge amount of money is there any way that we can spend 
you know, this is you know, our that, expenditure. That's actually, that's actually thinking outside the box. I love that. Um, and I hadn't even thought of that. So thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I want I to get know. Eversource to sponsor it. Oh, ooh. <laughs> oh, I mean, again, let's, the, the great thing about, the, I'm hoping is um, send off a group to work on this and brainstorm ideas. And like, if we say, oh, let's get some corporate money and let's get Eversource and the budget is, you know, $989 and split it in half, we would come back and say to either Veronica or to you, okay, here's the idea. We're going to go to Everforce and ask for $479.50. And we're going to go ask you for ARPA money for $479.50. And so we wouldn't do anything. We wouldn't spend it until you said yes. Um, so do you think you need like charge to be like an official, I mean, like what, what is it we need, to, you need from us tonight, I guess. I would love for the select board to say, um, uh, we commend the idea of a task force to work on making town meeting uh, more uh, accessible, um, easier to come to. And we endorse the effort to create a task force as presented by Nelson and Thad in this, uh, in this paper. And uh, we will select somebody to be the liaison from the select board. Um, so we got a, a constant stream of thought to you, and we encourage them to go find other volunteers to join the task force. You sure you didn't miss anything? Oh, no. sure you didn't miss anything there? No. That sounds great. I just can't like restate that as as, as a motion. <laughs> I, I I can write it up as a motion, and because uh, I don't think I even saw the, the 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 proposal that you're referencing. I I just keep checking through my email, and I don't think I even saw that. Um, uh, Louise just sent it out today about five o'clock. Really? Okay. So, uh, so let's, is, we, we, we have, we have, um, still have seven or eight minutes before our next thing. If you want, we can pull it up. If you got any questions about it, if you can, if I can share screen, I have yeah, it on. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause I can, can I share screen. Ernie, do you want to put it up? You must, you, you're probably the, the host here, right? No, now now Thad is the co-host. I just made Thad the co-host so he oh, can do good. that real quick. You promoted already, Thad. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, and, and I did want to mention that I'm happy to volunteer myself to be a liaison in, in this. All right, can you see that? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So here are the categories: community outreach, select board liaison sorts of things that we would work with Veronica about, media committee, childcare almost taken care of, so that's great. And then we played with just a timeline of what would happen by now. Here's things that need to happen by March 15th. Here are things that need to happen between March 15th and April 30th. Here are the things that need to happen around May 1st to June 4th, so that uh, you know we're, we're uh, staggering things, trying to keep people's interest. And here's my little, I'll just tell you, somebody in your universe has had this document for over two weeks. So just saying. I've seen, I, I saw it, I saw it like at least last week, if not sooner than that. And I do, I do know the one thing that um, there has been outreach regarding the pre-town meeting and the, the people that for whom that is a labor of love of many years wish to keep it just the way it is. They, they they think that it's successful and that um, it's it's a great they they love it just the way it is. It's a tradition that is. So, so here's my nudge about that. I I think we might agree that in this time that we are in in 2022, there are benefits of tradition and there are benefits of new thoughts and new ways of doing things. And I think that we can find ways to have a both and conversation without running into a stone wall that says, no, it's gotta be the same tradition. Um, I think there are ways we can gently do a both and. Well, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. The, 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 so the thing about that is that that is not an actual town, that, that is just a group that, that never has been an actual town event. That's, that's something that is run by the two people that have always been running it. And, um, and I, I don't even know, they, it might've been an original idea. It's been copied by towns all over the county by now. Um, but, um, 
but but basically, you know, uh, it, that that's the kind of thing that I don't even know if we can tell them what to do. Uh, I mean, you can ask nicely, but exactly. Uh, I, th I think that, that could continue yeah. to happen. That tradition, I think, that's a lovely tradition, yeah. and I think it should continue to happen regardless of what else we do outside of that to promote participation in town meeting. So our our approach would be to say to those two people that you just talked about, Phil. I don't know who they are, et cetera, but one of us would say, "Wow, this is great." Um, you all have incredible knowledge. We've got some energy. How can we help you? How can we let's how can we put out sound signs about the pre-town meeting? Um, so the, 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 the two people are um, Jim Recor, who is also the town moderator, and Mary McClintock, who's also on the planning board. And both of them have just stellar careers in public service for our town. And it's just those are like two two of the people that make the town's world go round. So would they I mean be, I would say that they would be really great nominees for this working group <laughs> to try to maybe. you know encourage participation in town meeting because that's really I think the, the point of what why they have the pre-town meeting is to get people to participate in the actual event. Right. And they may get excited about town meeting light or about uh, warrants that have detailed information about them beforehand, all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm not keeping track of of your suggestions, I'm hoping like Veronica or somebody would say, oh, here are the two people we think you would want to work with. Veronica will be the liaison. Nelson and I probably have two other people. So all of a sudden we got a little working group of six. We would be totally, we're not going to try to take anything over. We just want to get it organized. So it's as positive as possible. And then, you know, the, the, the one that we would want to set a meeting up with is the town clerk to see how much of the, the town clerk's budget is available for some of the postage pay, direct mail stuff, and the yep. posters, the sign up, all that stuff. So there is an amount in that budget for town meeting stuff. So I don't, but I have no idea what it is. Yep. Um, but yeah, so initiative is good. So we would I'm love to hear this. I'm all in favor of encouraging initiative and yeah. Do, I mean, do we have to make an official motion? Um, it's it's a working group, not really. Okay, all right. How about okay. if the if the official motion was the select board su supports the creation of a working group to work collaboratively um, to increase attendance and excitement about town meeting? <laughs> there you go. Sure. <laughs> we'll take that as a motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. aye. Well, I'll second it, and we can there all you go. say yeah, aye. Yeah, yeah, good, we needed that. Um, Great, and I will send you, I'll send it, I'll write it up and send it to Veronica so that it's, it's actually- Veronique, Veronique. Veronique, Veronique. sorry. Veronique. Does she go by, so Ver, Veronique, is it Veronique. Veronique or do they call you, I heard somebody call you Ronnie or something. Oh no. <laughs> well, good. Now my mother was French, so it has to be Veronique. Veronique. <laughs> you don't We're have to stay with the like French that, <laughs> Merci, merci. Yeah, there you Veronique. go. And and so is it is, is everybody okay with the select board representative being Veronique? Veronique? Sure. Well, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank and you, we're going to try to do this so it isn't more burdensome. You got to, I mean, just you're going to be the constant communication thread that we'll uh, check in with you about. And if, if you get excited about, oh, the media work group, well then, yeah, we'll we'll grab you. But I, I have a feeling you had a lot on your plate. Yeah, we all do. Um, just quickly, who are the other two people just that you talked about for the pre-town meeting you think would be good? Michael? Uh, Mary McClintock and um, Jimmy Recor. Jimmy. They have run the pre-town meeting for many years. Great. What's Jimmy's last name? Recor, R-E-C-O-R-E. -E. Really the great thing about only having been here four years, I can plead lots of ignorance. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Their their main issue is always that it be fun and respectful, right. and you know, not scary for people to come to, and that it be a good practice for people who want to come and practice what it's going to be like to stand up in front of town meeting and talk about an issue. And it'll be good practice for people who are prima donnas and want to talk for fifteen minutes to learn that they shouldn't do that. Oh, and, did I say that? They can be shut right down. We don't have to follow Robert's rules of order, or you know, it's 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 Those Jimmy's people don't rules generally of order. come to practice. <laughs> right, that's right. Yeah. They... <laughs> but Jimmy's—I right. like, have to say—Jimmy is a very, very good, um, 
he's I, I really appreciate and respect Jimmy as a moderator. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, he's got gifts. You're lucky to have him. He's he's definitely got gifts for that. Okay, I think we've taken up enough of your time. Um, All right, that's good. Thank you, thank you. Right. I will write a little thank something you. up, and we'll be in touch. Good. And now six thirty. Wonderful. It's six thirty. We are right on the nose, Alan. We're like <laughs> right thank at, you. The, at the appointed hour. Beautiful. Thank Thanks. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Do you have a quorum, Alan? I do. And I want to miss off my cell phone. Go for an hour. Damn it. Oh, man. Hey, Alan. Hey, Alan. Alan, do you have a quorum? I couldn't hear you because you're muted. I think we're getting our wedding for Roy. I'm not sure who's on the the five two two. Could that not be Tom one? Donovan? Oh, okay. He needs right. to uh, he needs to unmute. I think I accidentally muted him. <laughs> oh. Well, then Eric, if you're a host, you could change that number to Tom Donovan. You could, you know, you. If you click on that little blue box, I think you as host could just change, just type in the name. I could type in the name, yeah, but I can't um, unmute him. And there's oh. Roy. But, but then we know who he is. All right. So we're, you wanna vote to, you wanna vote to open your meeting, Alan? Or okay, hold on. Open your meeting, we're ready to go. You got a quorum. All right, I uh, vote to uh, make a motion to join the select board for the presentations tonight. All right, so we are, and uh, so we are now in a joint meeting, a normal joint budget meeting, and uh, on the agenda today, the budgets to review department 210, the police department, and department 220, the fire department plus a few capital requests. I just so, want to ask real quick, are we sure that's Tom Donovan and not somebody else? Is I'm not true? at all. Okay. But. If Tom unmuted, he could let us know. I know, I can't, uh, I can't, I've asked to unmute a couple of times, but. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so. Um, I'm, reaching, have, I'm reaching out to Roy right now to see if he can join us. He's Roy here. Roy. He's here. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah I hear oh, you. Good. We're here. Okay. Hey, now we have a quorum. I'm very we much. We really have a quorum, beyond a doubt. <laughs> All right. Good. So we we have Ken here. Can can we pull up the um, the police budget on the screen? Oh, good. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. I'm just going to shrink it a little. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Can you see that, Ken? Well, I've got it in front of me anyway. So oh, okay. <laughs> also, I'm ready when you are. Yep. Yep. Anytime. Okay. Uh, basically, you'll see most most things are level funded, with the exception of you'll see dues went up substantially. That's because in the past years, a lot of the training was paid to the mass chiefs who supplied the training. Um, so we said, well, we better clean this up, we'll just make that straight dues and maintain the training just as it is with what's coming down uh, from the state, which we, was, we really don't know, but uh, we know it's gonna go up. So we thought we'd take, take the, tra the previous dues paid to the mass chiefs and move that into the dues by itself with the other organizations and maintain the training 
alone. Other than that, everything pretty much is identical to what it has been. Mm. Is you sure that's going to be enough for that level of uncertainty? <laughs> I'm never sure of the <laughs> the the crystal ball isn't working that well, Phil. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you know, I'm going on best guess based on what we've been told. Last week we heard about a lot of new training that you're going to have to do. Oh, yeah. Is, yep. is that in here? Uh, well, some of that has been built into this year. We're going to take it. We got the $2,100 from the FERCOG to be distributed. That'll take care of about half of one individual's training. <laughs> so a little less than half, actually. It's Realistically, I'm thinking it's to be about forty-five to forty-six hundred dollars per person who has to go through the Bridge Academy. And that's <laughs> over three years. That's spanned over three-year term. Yes, we only have one person going through this year. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's. Every year, can every year can you win the prize for best best budget submission and best budget integrity? Well, every year, every I, year. I try to be fiscally conservative. Yeah. So, you know, you you don't know what you don't know. That's right. That's right. So that, that's the basic budget. And then there was one capital request I had submitted to Veronique um, a month ago, month and a half ago. And that was for, a, most people have probably seen these. Most These are not the radar trailers, but the radar signposts, which you're seeing more, more frequent. Um, so I put in for two of those. I got a quote from a vendor they were $36.96 a piece. So I put in for two of them. And that way there, those can be moved around the different streets. And the one big advantage of those now with the tech, modern technology is not only are they a display, but they also are a traffic data collection system. So you can monitor average speeds, high speeds, low speeds. And as you've seen, they also have violator alert flashes that come up on those screens as well. So they seem to be pretty effective right where they're at until the people get by them. So uh, is, that the, is that the small ones that go up on like a pole or something? That, that like is the, correct. The one that's right outside of the Frontier parking lot on... The, Similar to, yeah, on Pleasant Street. Yeah, it's, it's on that idea. There's, all, there's one usually down on uh, 116 in Sunderland. And also you see one, I don't know if it's still there. They used to have one up on uh, Upper Road in Deerfield. Yeah. Back way to Greenfield. They powered by solar? Yes, they are. That'd be great. Yeah. So then, and then you'd be thinking about putting one of them outside the school as well. Is that so they seem to sort of migrate towards schools for, in every town. I don't know. Yeah. The, the beauty of them is you can move them around. Yeah. You know, they're just basically uh, you're on, a, you're on a, a clamp or a chain. You can anchor them and then move them. You know, I get a lot of requests on Elm Street. Yeah. So I'd pop one there. Shelburne Falls Road, yeah. you get requests. Yeah. Whaley yeah. Road, you get requests. So I thought it would be good to have those that were portable and movable. They're a great reminder. Yeah. Yeah, for down. the immediate area. But I, like I say, I think people get past them and then forget about them. But at least you can monitor the average speeds too. Great. So anyway, so we put in a capital request there for $7,400 for two of them. So I, I have a request for the finance committee. Uh, uh, I mean, we really don't have a capital committee right now, Alan. And, <laughs> and, you know, we, we only have two of us on what used to be called the capital committee, is Roy and myself. And it feels to me that if we could more officially make the finance committee acting as the capital committee, you, you know, it, it, it's more under your, 
your guys than any other committee in town. Okay. That means we have to increase our budget. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, the capital committee never had much budget, I can tell you that. But. I think we should increase our membership as well. Yes, that's yeah. right, boy. But we only have two of us who are at least even acting as the capital committee, and so we'd never have a we can't have a quorum. Yeah. We also have a liaison. We also have a liaison to the personnel committee. You're going to make the finance committee that too. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't give us any ideas, Alan. <laughs> the capital committee seems more aligned with the finance committee. Yeah. Agreed. So if we're if the capital committee were to act on this and vote, you know, kind of like approve that this is something we want to have a warrant, uh, 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 an item in the warrant, yeah. um, perhaps we could vote on it, you know, as the select board and finance committee or have just the finance committee, but I I don't have an issue with it. I mean, uh, I don't know what the, what the town bylaws say or anything if, if at all. And, I don't uh, either. What what where does Bob? Would you be would you be part of it still? Uh, you and I are the current finance committee. Sure. Right, but uh, I, I mean, if we wanted to say there's a select board, I mean, I'm the select board liaison to the finance committee, and oh, you're okay. the finance board's liaison. <clears throat> To the, I mean, to the capital committee, <laughs> right? Yes. So, so we can we can leave it that way. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, there were different phases for this committee. At the outset, I mean, we we had no you know 15 year plan, and um, that committee kind of was in the uh, the capital committee I'm talking about was certainly instrumental in in uh, in. Are, are folks hearing me, by the way? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, the, um, so they were instrumental in that. There was a period of time we were inventorying items. That was another thing. So all that stuff seems to have gone by the wayside. Um, what we do have is a more, I think, organized way for the departments to, su to uh, submit their requests. And perhaps so, um, well... There's still a lot of, I guess, I guess integrating uh, stuff into that 15-year plan or 25-year plan or whatever it is, and trying to shift it around from year to year. That's that's critical work, I would I would say. So, um, I, yeah, I mean, it can become part of the finance committee, I, I, I guess. Yeah. And I hope it's just temporarily until we okay. find so, some more members to actually have a capital. Yeah. Somebody yeah. should approach Dana again because you know he he left. Be, not, I mean, I, I, he, he's he might be recruitable again. It, his issues were with prior management. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so it's, now it's, that it's it's we need young blood. It's tough to find young blood, and I understand it because they're busy with families and they're busy, you know, with with their lives, and that's uh, a problem. It's, it's really a problem. Um, but there's plenty of old, old folks in town, and um, maybe we need to make a more concerted effort to, to recruit them. I don't know. Anyway. Well, I don't know. So, so I think I heard a lot of support for Ken's uh, capital request. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't have any further questions. Rihanna and Roy, do you have you any further questions? Pretty straightforward. No, no I have no. I, I like those. Uh, I like those uh, reminder things that you can call it that. And if they, no. I guess I have one co question: Is there a camera that captures a license plate? Or is that an option? <laughs> that that would be an option if you want me to get that. No, I didn't no. say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is as not. As far as I know, planned. no, not, not yet. Planned because... at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but those those traffic cameras really work. Honestly, they do. And, and if you've ever been pulled over on Waitley Road, you never speed on Waitley Road again. I can, I can say that. Um, I'm very but, happy to hear that. <laughs> and if you've ever visited like anyone. 20 years ago. And I'm, yeah. Um, but 
so is this is this a, is this a capital request that's going to be placed on the warrant? Is that what you're asking right now? Right. Okay. All well, right. Well, this is just the first discussion part of it. The vote right. comes. Okay. Yeah, with that's, yeah. Okay. But generally, but generally, this is where you get all the questions out so that he doesn't have to come back. So. Yeah. And again, my question is like, ARPA money is. I mean, this is this is not like a huge expense. That like seventy five hundred dollars. This doesn't seem like. I'm just thinking of the conversations we had about like town meeting light. Is this something that we could fund outside of town meeting? Uh, so, Veronique, are you keeping track of the list of ARPA requests? Yes. I mean, yes, I think that's a great suggestion. We could add this to that list. Yes. And someday we'll approve them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anything, anything else from anybody from, from Ken? I just wanted to ask, Ken, Ken, were these the signs that give you a smile or a frown? Uh, you know, I can't answer that. I'm not 100% sure if they have a, uh, emojis or not. Okay. The, the one, the one on, on right outside of the front uh, frontier does. Yeah. Uh, no, it's going to be like blinking red, that's all. <laughs> like, yeah, blinking yeah. red or, or then when you're good, you know, you're white or yellow. Right. Yeah. Or, or you get pulled over and then literally. But, it, it, but if you approach it right there, the speed limit, I think, is 20 or 25. But And I know if you approach it right at the speed limit and just go a little bit slower and a little bit faster, you can get the thing to frown, smile, frown, smile, frown, smile real fast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's what I. You've I've been did. working on I'm that. Only, I guess I'm the only one You're that like ever way more that. full time, free time than like the rest yeah. of us. I, think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just go, I go past there a lot. Or teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, thanks, Ken. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. On to Department two thirty two twenty, the Fire Department. Wow. Chief Bob Baker. Good morning. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi, How are you? Hi. I'm doing good. Thank you. Can Can you see the screen? No, but I have my budget right in front of me, so I'm uh, okay. So, um, Brian, we just put up your the, the budget for your your budget for um, on the screen. So, if you want to talk about it, then we can all we we're all okay we're all together. This. Well, do you mind if I start with the first line? Sure. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thank, thanks. Um, just because the in Tom's budget. Um, FY22, he had mentioned that he had plans to increase Chief Baker's stipend over two years. So if you look at the difference up here from what was budgeted in 2021 to um, 22 and now what's requested, the difference here is the same. So I just, I'm honoring Tom's former request. I didn't know what the vote was before. I'm assuming since it was in his budget book um, so that that is why I had put that in there because it was Tom's request, and as mm -hmm. his follower, I am honoring his former request. Chief, does that sound familiar to you? Oh. Yes, it does. All right. Um, okay, uh, your next item, which is clerical, you notice it's gone up a little bit because the other uh, my other part-time secretary of one hour a week she worked has left and we're looking in the process of looking for a new one and Veronique and I talked and we figured that we probably should pay them around, around $18 an hour for one hour a week that's what that 936 plus the extra two percent is 955 dollars for that if that's what you're wondering about that one uh, the rest of them are pretty much the same uh straight across the board, except for the 2% increase that you, we've got listed here. Um, the next three blanks, you see a deputy chief, uh, one deputy chief stipend is for Adam Baker. Uh, the other deputy chief is for Ron Hawks, and the other one is for deputy force warden of Ron Hawks. Those uh, are quoted at $99.16 every six months. So that's what those are added in, but those are all part of the next labor budget below that, uh, below those two or three items. See, it's the labor. Their price is figured into that one. So they've 
I think what we're going to, Veronique and I are going to do is just kind of, kind of uh, uh, separate them from the regular labor budget because we're always being asked as to what their stipends are. So we will try to uh, separate that from that after the budgets are approved. Uh, the next ones down, they're all pretty much the same. Every one of them goes down through, uh, let's see, 7,100, 8,855, 1,000, uh, 300,000, 350, 3,000, 7,500, 10,000, 2,000, 6,400. All those remain exactly the same as they were this past year. Uh, we're not asking for anything new because at our, uh, my budget meeting with my uh, board, my uh, officers, I should say, we had talked about the most probably the most important thing we would want to try to have done is when we expand in the garage after the highway departments are there, there's going to have to be some work being done. And uh, we didn't want to increase our budget and try to jeopardize any work that could be done inside the garage. So that's basically why we held the budget exactly the same as last year. And other than that, uh, any questions I can ask you, answer them for you? Uh, Bob, a couple of things changed. I'm just wondering, are you moving things around? You, you know, the cell phone went down and uh, is it phone rental? or Yeah, no? the, yeah the, the, cell, the cell phone went down for one reason. Uh, what the reason was when we went to this uh, AT&T FirstNet, it's called, it, it allows anybody that gets onto this FirstNet account and my cell phone from town is on that account. It allows them to, in the case of a serious emergency, when everybody's trying to use their cell phones in a certain area because of something catastrophic happened, uh, this, these cell phones will override everybody else's phone to be able to get out for emergencies. That's what AT&T and FirstNet is doing. But what AT&T and FirstNet also did is they lowered the rates quite a bit. We were paying... Uh, somebody quote me, I think it was 100 and close to $130 a month for my phone and the phone in the ambulance. And now we're paying $45, I believe, a month. So for my phone, and I think the ambulance phone is like, I don't know, 12 or $15. Great. I don't know exactly what it is. But it's quite a, quite a drop in service. So we improved the service and cut the payment down quite a bit, which I think is great. Uh, yeah. And my old the, the old town phone that I had was uh, getting old and uh, not being allowed to be acceptable into this new 5G coming up and all that stuff. So I, in their process of this AT&T FirstNet move, they offered cell phones. So the, co the coordinator, the one top position in that whole budget, which is my phone, is the coordinator phone, they allowed you to get a brand new iPhone for one dollar. So I took up the offer and I got a new phone for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the story Bob on the. Bob is the one to call in a zombie apocalypse. Bob, <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> it's the only one's going to have cell service. Yeah. Uh, right. I exactly. have a question, uh, Bob. Uh, sure. Vehicle maintenance for the last three years. The expended actual has exceeded the budget, and I'm asking you. Which was it now? Vehicle idea? maintenance. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, do we, you think it's a good idea to increase that? You have it 7, probably would be, but, uh, We have gone over like mm. both years because there's something catastrophic that happened to one of the trucks that was not planned yeah. for. Uh, yeah. It might not be a bad idea to increase that some money. Uh, yeah, we have I know the minimum expended was ninety-seven hundred dollars approximately for last right. year, year before last. So maybe keep yeah. that as a baseline. This is a suggestion. That's up to you guys, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'll follow whatever you you people feel you want. Uh, well, I mean, um, it'll be money that. Do you I have? Mean, any, you might not use it. You might, you know. Well, yeah, if we don't use it, you know, it goes back to free cash. But right. do you uh, foresee any type of? Uh, Potential for your, your, you, know, you have one truck you want to budget as part of the capital request to replace. Right, and that's mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, that at the, that time will be a twenty-five year old vehicle. Uh, yeah, but that that truck is one of the ones that in the last year or two has given us some fits on um, 
valve problems and uh, pump issues that we yep. had to have straightened out. Um, that's mostly what the problems with any of the vehicles are. It's not so much uh, the vehicle itself, the, the pumps to the little yeah, the peripheral equipment. Give you problems. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, I, I, I make a I just from, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I would make a no, motion. Then uh, we, we we have increased that line item budget there uh, four thirty zero to uh, ninety seven hundred dollars from seventy five hundred. I think that's a good idea. Fourth up from the bottom. We don't use it, it goes to free cash, but if you need it, it's there. And something like a piece of equipment needing, you know, extraordinary maintenance is nothing we want to under budget for. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think that's a pretty sound suggestion too. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, I would even like up it, like why 9,700, why not 10? Okay, we're living large. Sounds good. <laughs> I think Extra oil changes. There. Extra oil changes all the way around. Oh, nice. Well, you can't change <laughs> oil often enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we do have a, we do have a very good gentleman that comes right to the garage to work on our equipment. Oh, he, good. That's all he does work on fire equipment. He's from the uh, Goshen. And he works on all the area of trucks in, in area of towns as fire apparatus and ambulances. And so our is ambulance department and our fire <laughs> he is probably uh, early 50s. And he's okay. very, yeah, very he's a, he's a young man. <laughs> yeah. So the, 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 the other thing that I was thinking in, 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 in your budget, Chief, is, is the fuel. I mean, the cost of fuel has doubled from what it was last year at this time. It is, but we really haven't. Uh, it, yeah, it has. But, I mean, how can you? I guess I, I don't know what to say. I think the fuel cost may come back down again. Uh, I don't use that much fuel, uh, to be honest with you. So I felt that that uh, gasoline account of three hundred dollars or three fifty, up uh, fifty dollars, uh, would be adequate. I mean, it's, it's give All or right. take. I mean, All right. it's you know. I think we, we'd be wise just to watch this in the and see what's going to happen to it. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, inter interrupt here for a sec. I think we maybe glanced over the, uh, I was I was thinking the same thing with uh, when uh, Ken's budget was up there, uh, you know, because the fuel hadn't changed and even the maintenance on the cruiser was, was the same. So and? Our, our, we don't have to go back to it tonight, but it might be. You know, I, Ken wants to comment if he could. Um, yeah, that, that's one of those things, though, that if we don't do that tonight, are you going to remember in two months when it comes up for a vote? Well, so, okay. Ken will remember, and he's about to talk. Well, no, he already. No, he already won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of us will remember. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Yeah. Never. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Did, did what, you was that, what, was the, what was the question? I was doing some paperwork. No, vehicle maintenance, Ken. Do you think your budget is uh, robust enough? You should budget more. And also for fuel. Uh, uh, let me look real quick, see what that item was. Vehicle maintenance, we had $2,500. Uh, we, well, we're going to expend that this year for sure. We had a couple of problems. Um, I don't know. It's it's it usually runs right around there. So, what about the fuel, Ken? Uh, fuel, I think. Let me look real quick to see where we're at right now, so, right at this moment. Uh, so far this year, Veronique, are we going to are the expenses? I think we're. I think I'm going to be fine on fuel. Okay. Okay. Are the expended columns going to get filled in? in the next yes, week? I I didn't fill them in. Yeah, I mean I can fill them up to the moment, but um, yeah, I know. Or, or six, you know, it's just I have to go through each. If if you want me to do that before each presentation, yeah. I can try no. to get it. No, I, I that's I don't think that's necessary. No, okay. it's, and it's I mean, we get them from Mike every month, so we know yeah. kind of where we're at. So yeah, they also are uh, would be year to date, which yeah, yeah. It's hard to read them. A little misleading. 
Yeah. It's yeah. lagging. Yeah, it's misleading, it's but if, and also some are front loaded and others aren't, you know, very few budgets are even every month. I think but, the historical uh, data is enough, for me at least. Yeah. Well, as far as the cruiser maintenance, if we wanted to, probably I would say maybe bump it to three, but that, I think the gasoline, the fuel, I think you're fine on. Okay. Thank you. We should bump, we should we should bump it to three then. Okay. I, I mean, I'm whatever, whatever doesn't it. get spent goes back to the general revenue fund, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not like we pass this budget and there's no danger that I mean, like why not kind of err on the side of caution? But for fuel, he's been underspending the budget item. Well, right. Exactly, anyway, but yeah. not for maintenance. So it would be good to yeah. raise it. Okay. So we did. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Good. Well, with regard to the uh, fire and the, and the uh, police budget, I, I have no further questions or suggestions. Anybody else? Have you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. No, I feel like these are very non controversial budgets. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. case you like the ambulance, because Gemma is probably the most spot on of all the budgets. It's kind of I know, yeah, I, yeah. Just the, the the one the one thing that um, just to call you you know the the category the categories about the potential cola adjustment or whatever you we call it for two two point five three just so that everybody's noticing that the differences in both these departments um, are extremely modest. Mm -hmm. So we haven't we're not talking about that yet, but just so the, just 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 to call that to everybody's attention. And and they're also they're like way less than like the SSA cola is like yes. five point nine not it's like six percent basically this year. So this is like way less than it should be, as far as I'm concerned. You can always adjust any of those columns to make it whatever amount when you start considering that. So it'll be easy to see. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying it's as far as the argument goes, it's like, why is it going up like 2%? Like it should be going up more than 2%. Did you want me to stop sharing now? I guess, I guess if we're, if we're done with questions. So. The, uh, hi, are we there? Yes. yes. Yes, Bob, thank you. Okay. We, uh, I put it in a capital request too. Are we going to discuss that tonight or not? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. uh, in, in a past history in college, we replaced all our fire equipment, or our fire trucks, I should say, at the 25 year age limit. Uh, and that's going to be the next 25 year old truck's going to come up in 2028, which is only five years from now. And the way prices have escalated in the last year or two, I mean, in 2018, we spent 435,000 for a new pumper. But I made a real rough, and I mean, it is rough, estimate of 650,000 in 2028. And I have no idea whether I'm gonna be close or not, but that was my projection. I had to do something. So I'm asking that you start funding this over the next five years uh, so that we get, when we come up to replacing the pumper, we have just about all the money in an account. So that is my suggestion to you people. I would have asked for 100,000 100, a year, I think it has to put in there. Is that what it was, Veronique, 100,000? I don't think we discussed exactly how much it would be each yeah. year. Yeah. Well, um, well, so you're, 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 you're uh, suggesting we, we put it in a stabilization account. To, uh, so we create a, uh, a special fund for the truck, right? Right, earmarked for the truck, yes. Yeah, My, I would, make it a special uh, stabilization fund just for the truck. Yeah, I, I mean, in theory, I have no no issues with that. But well, I, for, I, we're doubling up as the capital committee. I, I think it's a good idea because we're planning out five years, which is what I would like to know, like what the status of uh, the bridges funding is going to be. Um, is there any you know, we've all, I mean, we had, we had some, a bridge collapse in Pittsburgh that the feds maybe are going to be funding. Um, I mean, I know that we were instructed in the town, you're on your own, basically, 
and we got money to repair that uh, nasty bridge on, on uh, Poland Road. But um, it would be nice to know what what the situation will be like for the rest of the bridges, just because it's a nasty it's a nasty expense, and it's you know to, to ask the towns to, to, to fully you know for the full burden to fall on the towns in my mind is it's asking a lot. It really is. And I just, so I don't know where we are at that. I don't know if we've had any further deterioration of, um, of some of the, the uh, troubled bridges, um, but it would be good to you know, come up to speed on that as well. Before well we I can put an email to Ron Sweet if you'd like, Roy. If you like, uh, you know, it'd be good to know before we say. Unless you want to draft Bob, Chief Baker, to the uh, long-term but... capital committee. Roy, 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 is there any interrelationship or connection between road roads and bridges and the fire truck? I mean, uh, no, the, the, the interconnection is how much money, you know, in other words, yeah. are we going to set aside, oh, the feds are going to come in and pay for all the bridges. Fine. Let's set aside a couple 200,000 for the fire truck. Or yeah. no, there's not. Are we setting aside any money for these bridges? I got another question that I'll, I should bring up here. Um, it's unclear. So we've had a highway department that is now in their new home. And we have a building that is now occupied by the ambulance and the fire department. What do we, we still have that same building with the same issues. It's on the edge of the river. It's, uh, I mean, do we, does anybody discuss this? Yeah. Yes. There's a bunch of people working on this, but we are, we are going to be putting money into that building. And that's one thing I can tell you. Um, and I mean, no, I mean, it, it needs it. And, um, you know, it's, it's the highway department's not completely out of there yet. Um, but they, they, uh, there is a working group composed of the departments using that, that will be using that, um, as well as others, um, in, we're drafting the, highway the current highway facilities committee who is an ex which is an extreme high functioning committee that has saved the town hundreds of thousands of dollars Absolutely. and that is no that is no exaggeration I um, that. And, and and we're we're turning them loose on that building so wow. um no that's fantastic good but thank you the thought and, was not too long ago that the building's basically condemn condemnable. You know. Yes, we're, we're uh, not, not not to be a stickler, but you know, uh, open meeting laws were kind of off topic. Well, yeah. and, uh, well we have Chief Baker. But I mean, just, just so that you know, just so that you know, like we're we're making that we're making that a proper proper home for for its future occupants as best. Oh, good. We can. That's right. good. Um, That's good. And now, now we're getting that, back to, uh, to to Chief Baker here with regard to the, the new fire truck, the budget. I mean. Uh, uh, have anyone any suggestions? My thought is we should at least budget a hundred thousand dollars for this year and for the next three fiscal years. So there, you know, I, I got a couple thoughts about that. First of all, to the extent that interest income is helpful, it makes sense to front load as to the first year if you can. Um, yeah. Also, also you predict the interest it, rates in twenty twenty eight, Phil? Is that it? <laughs> well. I mean, it's it's the the the, the town made what seven percent on all of its investments last year, right? Six six point something. So that's yeah. you know that's 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 something. Hundred thousand times that is something. It's yeah worth worth talking about. Um, and the um, the other thing is that there's there's always the borrow versus save discussion as well. And and I know interest rates have shot up, but. Um, uh, it's something to also keep in mind. Well, so what are, but what are we being asked to do right now? Like to move a hundred thousand dollars to the capital stabilization fund specifically for a fire truck. I mean, is there like, what is the action item that we have to decide upon? Yeah. We're, so we're just, the, the first go around here, this is the, a discussion. We don't vote. We don't vote the budget this time. Right. Okay. Um, but I'm still new. But, but to put but, it all on a table, uh, that is, you know, in terms yeah, of, but, 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 but we work, you want to create a special through. reserve fund for this truck replacement. I think we've done that in the past. 
for yeah and then and borrow money so we were usually money. putting in twenty five thousand a year yeah uh, I, have a, I have a question for chief baker how much of a deposit yes. do we have to put down to get any kind of a uh idea of what this this vehicle is going to cost in 2028 have you gotten that far into think, type of negotiation to be, be honest with you, i don't think you would get anybody to ever even think about giving you a quote well, well uh, it might be helpful then the for us if, if we could get a uh, if you can share maybe with veronique and if you turn in turn veronique could please share with us the uh vehicle you're looking at because you know for town meeting and discussion purposes it'd be really helpful if we have an idea of what we're looking at well, it's 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 a vehicle the same as the last one we purchased, almost okay. a, almost a identical vehicle to the last right. one we purchased. Uh, it's nothing, no, not any different. No added cost to it other than what we had on this truck. We kept this one at a somewhat of a modest uh, figure to keep our dollars and cents down low on it. And I the 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 officers discussed the new truck at, at length, and they said that would they would love to try to have the next truck almost identical to the one we got now so uh, but i again this last year i mean prices i don't know what the increase in the vehicle was this last year i'm sure it was well over a hundred thousand dollar increase in one year because the way the prices have gone through the roof on everything so yeah Bob, is this um is it a standard size or is it a because, or does it need to be a custom size because of the building? Actually, if we if we go to the size we have right now, the newest one, we had to pay a little extra to get that shrunk down in length. We had to take four and a half feet off it, I believe it was. Uh, if we move into the new station with a full bay for the truck, which we're hoping to do, uh we probably could get away with a truck just a little bit longer and probably less money than than uh than the, what the what this going to cost us now but again you got inflation we got who knows what inflation is going to do okay but so it's a guess it's a so, guessing game so talk uh <clears throat> discussion around the uh that building includes like a full-size bay or something well the discussion we've been talking about is we're trying to merge the fire department, the ambulance department, and the police department into that building. And one of the first things we talked about was getting our offices off the second floor of the town office building and get them into that building. So that shrunk down three of the bays a little bit uh, to make space for office space in there. So we still think we can do it. It'll be a little bit tight, but um, I know the police chief has expressed opinion on he needed storage space. So we, we're trying to talking about him having one bay, the fire having three bays, and the ambulance having the other bay because there's only five bays in there. So, but we're at the discussion stage too. Um, yeah. We were talking about how things would be financed up there. We're unsure at this point, but we're talking about different avenues for funding, and one of them may be some of that. I know it's opera. ARPA money or whatever it is that the federal government is going to give us, spend some of that, and also possibly uh, using some CPA funds. Yeah. They have $732,000 un earmarked money in an account that we could use some of that toward that too. So That's we're so hoping that yeah. it would be wonderful if we could come up somehow with a game plan that <clears throat> my hope, my hopes would be to put the office buildings on the outside of the building that's there so we didn't jeopardize the length of the base. Uh, so, so and, uh, uh, but it's all the talking stage now. So, so Wait, how would you, how would you put the office on the outside? Put an addition on. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have we have several different options that we're looking at right now. Okay. Um, retrofitting. Floor? I'm sorry. Could you build a second floor? Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah, and and you know, then you have to then you're dealing with ADA. We were really hoping these will be oh, yeah. come up. Yeah, so so the thought is either we three things we've batted around are putting a building on on the side, either for bays for lo long bays for some of the fire trucks, or the offices in a separate building, or just keeping the building as it is and creating offices by cutting into part of the bays. But these are all just preliminary discussions. So we're yeah we're at the beginning. <laughs> 
Sorry, I didn't mean to get off track there, Alan <laughs> and, and Phil. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I was fine with me, but you know, it's just open meeting laws. I mean, I don't want to have us accused of uh, whatever piling on another agenda. But uh, so I'm still trying to wrap my head. Bob, you have any uh, suggestions about what you would like to see expended by way of an annual uh, uh, donation to the reserve, contribution to the reserve, a special reserve fund for this truck? I'm thinking like $50,000 $50, a year for each of the next four years. We don't need an answer tonight, but something to think of. That seems low to make a big dent, you know, in what the truck is yeah. going to cost. Now, I think a hundred thousand. You know, to get the the quarter, to get the close to a little. Well, over he was half talking about twenty twenty eight. I mean, fifty thousand between now and twenty twenty eight. That's uh, well. You're talking uh, five years. Well, it's two fifty. Oh, you're thinking it's going to be at least six hundred fifty thousand. So, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. I think that's what I, uh, this is Robert. I think that's what I asked in my request for uh, CPA, the uh, capital request was for 100000 a year for five years. Okay, that makes sense. I, I can see that. Thank you. It's, and Chief, this, this, I, I remember seeing pictures of you like in the factory in Ohio, in Iowa or something, like select the, getting the finishing touches on the truck and then bringing it back or something. Was that? Yes, it what, was. Yep. That would that would be what you'd be doing again. Probably, uh, most all your fire truck companies have that built into their budgets to send people out to the factory to approve the uh, go over the semi-final inspection of the truck before it's sent, sent to you. And there's there's always a few changes that end up having to be made right, right near the end, and that's why we were out there. Uh, so. Uh, and that would be another deal with the, with the, in the future in two, 2028 that would happen again. And all the towns around us should do that. Because it's a pretty, pretty substantially major piece of equipment, very important piece of equipment. And they, the factories don't want to make, they, want, they don't want, they want to make sure that you got your truck exactly the way that you want. It. And then the kids get to name it at the grammar school. I remember that when my kids well, were little. Well, they, they did. Little. That was that was quite exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fun for the whole town. And they christened, <laughs> and they christened it too. Believe it or not, you probably didn't hear about that one. But <laughs> <laughs> the, kids, great the kids got to give it its first first bath with a fire hose. They really yeah. love that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm. 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 I'm I have enough from me. I, I suggest a hundred thousand, but we don't have to make any formal vote now. But I think yeah. I think it makes sense to me. Yeah. At least for this year, that certainly does. Yep. I think. Yeah. I Thank mean, you. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of this capital stuff is this this stuff that depends to some extent on the town's financial health. So. Um, We're pretty good right now. So let's go we'll, yeah. we'll out of hand. And. Uh, ARP, ARPA skews us into, uh, you know, non-poverty status, non-dire non-dire emergency poverty status. Yeah. <laughs> Takes the pressure off and having 430,000 approximately of free cash. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm, I'm okay with both these budgets as is, um, basically. Yeah. I don't have any I more questions. Further que I, I don't have a further question. We make a suggestion of Fire budget increasing the repairs maintenance on ten thousand. Yeah. And uh, I'm good. Roy and Rihanna, have you any other thoughts, suggestions to share? I'm done. I'm I'm fine. Okay. Right. Thank I'm, you. I'm I'm okay with the suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So with Bye that, we, we can we can close our joint meeting. Well, I can make a motion that we. Uh, Finance Committee ends the uh, meeting jointly with his honorable select board. Oh, we got the honorable status this week. Yeah, of course. All right. We're moving up in the world. We Second. appreciate your uh, volunteers. You're, pr you're practically volunteers. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, everyone. See you next, see you, see you next yeah. week. Very good. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> bye, bye. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. The select board's still in meeting. We still have a few other things. Ha, <laughs>
Hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I'm going to step out of this meeting. This yep. is Robert. Uh, yes. Yeah. You. You. Thank. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Baker. No problem. You all have. Thanks. You all have a good night. Thanks. Thank Chief. you. Yep. And Chief Wimet, you're you're also. We're good. Mate. Thanks. Working away. Yep. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, yeah, so here's where we could have the emergent, the uh, executive session on this contract update since so much happened over the weekend, um, but uh, with the teachers, but uh, I'm okay. I'm definitely okay not talking about that, but there is if you wanted to, if you wanted to find out the latest in contract teacher contract, we can do it under this clause because there was much that happened over the weekend. I'm fine with saving it until our next meeting. Um, but Jerry, <laughs> yeah, Gianna are here, so. So we didn't post it executive committee meeting. So no, we no, no, but there there wasn't any reason to until the stuff that happened over the weekend happened over the oh, weekend. I, yeah. So yeah. that's why it would fit under the forty eight hours. Um. Um, so Jerry, Jer Jerry, you did, you, you missed the public comment section, but, um, I'm not one to let technicalities, whatever. I mean, we, if it's okay with everybody else, we can let them have a public comment. Um, even though it's outside of the public comment section normally. Yeah, sure. But the items not anticipated. I'm totally okay. Uh, with yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I can be the judge, but. No. So, totally okay um. So we'll, we'll extend the public comment to now and um, go ahead, Jerry. You can unmute yourself first if you wanna talk though. But. Thank you for that consideration. Um, sure. I appreciate it. Really just, we just uh, want quickly to just check in with the select board about what's going on with NextAmp. And, um, and I think I, in my email, I wrote the question that I have is like, who, who has any authority over this. Does the select board have any authority? Can you guys help us at all? Is it really all falling to the planning board? Because they don't feel like they have much authority over this ongoing kind of stuff. And so we're just we're just reaching out to see um, where you guys stand, how you feel about, you know, what what leverage you might may or may not have. We're curious to hear. I think the leverage that we have is we can ask questions. You know, and so can you. Uh, uh, but um, no, we 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 don't have any leverage over EverSource or really Nextamp, um, except they. And I think Nextamp more than EverSource, and you might disagree. You know, they worry about their reputation a bit. Well, they have comp they have competition in town for right. so they were they there is a public relations component to their business plan that I don't know if Nexamp has that same corporate value. So um, we, we did write to them and ask them, you know, how it's going and have you heard, did you get the note back? No, that's why I was asking for a copy of whatever their Eversource's statement to you guys was. Um, and it'd be great if we could get a copy of that so that yeah. All that we've seen is Jamie Stanton's excerpt of the excerpt of the Eversource report. Well, they wrote back to Veronique, right? And and I think you asked them, are you going to send this out to the abutters? And I thought they may have said yes, but maybe, you know, we should just pass it on anyway. They did, but um, perhaps they don't have a full list of people they should be sending it to. So I can make sure that that's so they have not contacted you directly at all. We've been in touch with an engineer at Eversource. He's been very responsive and proactive, um, Dan uh, Lewis. But at the point at which I asked him to send me some documentation of his assessment, he was like, um, the public relations department has to handle that. And they're going to send stuff to your town administrators. Oh. So, okay. um, I mean, I could go back to him, but he kind of told me that the channels were through the town. So do we need to contact so, the public relations people? And we, get we actually have a designated Eversource public relations person um, who I've spoken to a couple of times in the past couple of weeks about other matters, but um, mm -hmm. his name is Mike Kane. 
he was actually on the call last Monday to us. So I don't know if you know, last Monday we called Eversource on the carpet before the select board and their, the re regarding herbicide spraying. Yep. And um, before that. The, before that, we caused a letter to get printed into the, in, in the recorder that didn't make Eversource look too good. And they came here and they took their lumps. They actually commented though, they felt treated very respectfully. And that although they did feel they were slightly raked over the coals, that they um, they we they appreciated the kindnesses that we extended to them in doing that. So, um, okay. So, so Jerry, just to let you know, um, they did come to my office and let me know that they were in what they told me was constant contact with the people who were involved. So I was unaware that you were not getting direct information from them. So I'll make sure that that you do. Well, we're getting phone calls from this guy, um, Dan Lewis, um, okay. and he's giving me a lot of information, but I want a document that has their statement. Okay. You know, because the, the, the words um, don't stack up in the same way. Mostly um, the statement that we have just says, we take this very seriously. We're doing an investigation. We don't have a good... Um, a, you know, a solution yet, you, you know, not, not extremely helpful, not, you know, not, not what you'd want to be hearing, but that they are working on it. Yeah. But, I mean, and, and then, and then Jerry, you know, is, I want it. these types yeah. of things, I, I'm constantly frustrated dealing with large corporate machines. And I've always found that an, an effective way to create the rec a record is to summarize my verbal conversation with one cog in that machine and send it to them in writing and ask that if it's not, if they disagree, respond. But if they don't disagree, poof, that's your record. And um, that's just one, I, I mean, that, that, that's always worked for me in the past, but it's not, I, I'm not, but cause, cause all we can do is ask. Like, I, I don't know if we have the legal mechanism to force them to turn over a written record of a conversation. They make records of everything. Like we know that about that company. They, they, the, in order for those employees to get paid, to get, to do that work, they have to submit a ticket and they, have, whatever. So there's a record of everything because they sure. are very, because they have very few actual employees. Everybody's a contractor, subcontractor, whatever. Right. Um, so, so, but getting it, getting, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not the one that asked for it. And so I don't know anything about it, but I know that like that, like your, that, that question, what's your lever? Like to me, that's like a kind of an overbroad, like uh, that's a broad question. It's like in, in any relationship, what's your leverage? I, um, we don't. Yeah. Um, well, I think you answered that yeah, question. Like, I understand that the select board doesn't have any leverage. I just want to check and make sure. Like a, if they violate a town bylaw, then there's, I, I imagine we have some leverage. Um, but they good. But I just didn't know. Subcon subcontracted with Nexamp, right? I mean, so it's, it, it seemed like this is- No, no. Uh, no, no, no. Eversverse is not saying, or ne I mean, either the problem is the lines that go from, you know, the facility up to Route 116 or it has to do with the equipment that's generating the AC. So it's either Nexamp or Eversource and no one wants to take responsibility for the problem. Well, and Nexamp views that they purchased equipment that should be, you know, that was approved by Eversource and, and Eversource hired an engineering company to look at the lines and approve them. And I mean, and this was years ago, this isn't even recent before, before Nexamp finished their design of what they needed to build, Eversource approved their ability to get the power out of there, you know, correctly and up to their substation. Yeah. And it should, and so no one is saying everything is fine. It, right. I mean, everyone right. yeah. is saying, <laughs> yes, it is not working. Everyone's saying like nothing yeah. is fine, but who is responsible? Like where yeah. do we go to- Well, to, like to, to me, it's really important to get the lessons about how we can be doing it better. Like that, that's, that's our goal. That should be our goal out of this. Like that we're stuck with the rules, the whatever that exists at the time, whatever. But, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't learn how to do it. And, you know, this is one of those deals that 
uh, I'll say this again about it, gener uh, just as a general rule, the problem with any democracy can always be solved with more democracy. That's my belief. And, and, um, and, and this is one of them. If, if our bylaws aren't strict, you know, if, if we didn't ask for the, if we didn't, if we weren't able to foresee, to ask for things that we didn't foresee, um, that doesn't make us bad. It just means there's something right. that we missed and we want to address it so that in the future it's better. Yeah, so obviously this is a learning experience. I just wish that this was right. a learning experience for Jerry and Gianna. But and yeah, it, and, and so we understand that. We're on the same page with all that. And and I understand they're working on it and I appreciate that. You know, I, I just want to get the documentation that's available in my hands in case there's a need for legal action because the town select board doesn't have any leverage. The, the planning board doesn't have any leverage. If I need to get someone else involved, I want documentation. I'm going to need documentation. And I've asked the Eversource guy that I've been in touch with to document that. And he pushed me off to the public relations people. So he's covering his ass in the right way. I get it. It's all through the right channels. I just want to get the documentation that you guys have or find out who at Eversource I need to talk to to get the documentation from them if you're not willing to give it to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, I and mean, we, we can, you know, we, I thought they were sending you the, the same letters that they sent to us, but we, we have, we got letters in reply to our request and we can definitely send them to you. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty it's, much And all like, I was we, for. The select board does not hold on to, the, the only reason, the only things that we do not share are documents that are legally privileged or that can't be shared. But generally anything that comes to the select board from anybody can get shared unless, unless there's a specific reason that it can't be. And there's like seven reasons in one law that something can't be shared. But, and I don't awesome. know of any in this case yet anyway. Right, I mean. They haven't told us anything that they said, please don't let the neighbors know that or, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. We would say if Eversource said they were sending documentation to us, like, and we don't have it, that that would be a red flag for me, you know, like. Yeah. I, I don't think they have sent any documentation at all. They've simply sent a letter that's basically saying they're looking into it, um, and they're having okay. their engineers work on it. So we don't have anything concrete, but we can certainly forward that. Well, can I share some information that Dan? shared with me that he said was going to be in that report to the select board you know there was he i specifically asked him because they've measured with the oscilloscope a frequency at um five kilohertz on the on the line and you know the electric grid is supposed to resonate at 120 to 160 hertz so something at five kilohertz five thousand hertz is way out of the tolerance of you know what's acceptable. So he said, I asked him, is is that mentioned in the in the document? And he said yes. Well, so, it was, they uh, uh, next hand mentioned that in the document they sent to us, and the and the the inverters that they purchased are the, there is an allowable amount of uh, harmonic distortion that their <laughs> inverters can produce, and they are they purchased inverters that would way, be way below that. And they're yep. measuring it much higher than that. Yep, yep, yeah. So th that's, that, that like, to me, that five kilohertz detail is a crucial one to have documented. And so Dan and I have talked about this and this actually was corroborated independently before like Eversource brought this information in. We sent recordings, Devlin sent recordings to an audio engineer and he came back and he was like, well, that's like, at, I measured 5,625 Hertz on that. That's way out of the, you know, and it's very, you know, interesting. And Dan, the engineer at Eversource, when I told him that was like, wow, that's really interesting because that's exactly the measurement that we got too. So, you know, this is how we're trying to like build up the amount of information that we have because we want to hold these people to on account. And, and if these frequencies are harmful, this is an area where the state law says that the town can regulate solar if it impacts health, safety, and welfare 
of the residents. You know, it's not about aesthetics. It's not about property values. It's about health, safety, and welfare. And I'm like really, you know, clear on that. You guys do have power. We have power. The state has power when it comes to that. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, but I haven't heard anything that, you know, that they're going to walk away saying we think everything is okay. No, yeah. no, no. And I haven't either. And I, I really hope they fix it and figure it out and everybody gets to go on and, and go on their merry way. Um, but so far, but, and, and, and the, the next ham site isn't an especially large array. Uh, the size doesn't matter. I'm yeah. just saying my, my experience so far is that if we don't stand up and hold our ground at every point in this process, we're going to get screwed. And Nexamp isn't going to do anything to, to protect us unless we stand up and demand it. And that's where I'm at. And I, I want to know who's on our team, who can help us and what we need to do. You know, And I, I want you guys to know where we're coming from. And, and Devlin is like, you know, she's already on like level 12 with this, you know, I'm trying to keep it at four and five here, but it's, 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 it's a serious matter. Now, it's not just some it's a matter of aesthetics, and oh, we can cover it up with trees. This is like a, a real health concern. And there is threat to material goods here. You know, there's information that says dirty energy is negatively impacting the electronics in my house. You know, it's decreasing the value and the, and the lifespan of every material thing I own here, potentially. In the letter, they told us that, that, that they've turned off the array now, right? They have, yes. But it persisted for a number of months. And we don't know if they're going to come back and say, I don't know, sue me. They haven't hit, hinted at that, that you know, but I, they may be forced to turn it on, you know, to do a test and then turn it back off again. Yeah, that's fine with me, too. I, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever is needed to figure it out and get it solved. Um, but I want them to know that it's not acceptable. And and I'm just I'm like just there is no tolerance for these companies right sure. now. You know, what, we've been the, through it a lot with them. And what's found the name? What's what's the name of the specific de harmonic convert harmonic deconvergence? Is that we, is that the name harmonic of harmonic distortion? Harmonic distortion. So d does anybody know of any instance where there's been a town in Massachusetts that has exercised its police powers over a solar provider based no, on I, I don't know on that? I mean, because that those are, that's where you can might maybe because there's there's a bunch of towns in in our state that are well-funded and have sign, you know, engineers and public, you know, all kinds of infrastructure that, um, that, that had it been an issue in their town would have been able to um, litigate these things. So, and, and that, that there's a lot of, t those towns have a lot more solar than we do. So um, I, yeah, I I'm, I'm looking for every angle, you know, I don't know if it's the health department, I don't know if it's DEP, you know, or what, but we're looking for every angle and we, we're trying to collect all the data we can so that, you know, we can be upfront with them and let them know that this is not cool and they need to fix it. And, you know, I'm not ready to go into some place of asking for punitive damages or anything like that. I'm just, I want to make sure that we are covered going forward. And, and honestly, I feel like for the next 30 years when this thing is here, for as long as this thing exists, I'm not going to have any rest. I'm going to have to be watching their, their backs all the time because we've just come again and again and again and again with things where they're not playing by the rules. And if someone doesn't, we're on the, and you know, we're your eyes and ears. We're on the front lines and who else are we going to tell? So, you know, that's why I'm here. So that's, that's, that's it. I just, I really needed to know, you know, if there was any leverage at the town level. Um, I know the plant with the planning board has been super, you know, uh, attentive to us. They also feel like there's not much that they can do. Well, either. You know, like, like the conservation commission, they, they enforce 
when you're violating wetlands and and the planning board it's when you're violating our zoning laws yep. yeah and, and the dep is when you're violating water it's like there's nothing that's that right that's right forest or you know well the you know there there should be the d you know there's a department of public utilities that's supposed to rec regu that regulates elect electricity transmission and um generation and um there used to be an off an office of ratepayer advocate that was that you would funnel complaints like this in like this but that was too expensive for governor deval patrick he's the one that eliminated that and saved hmm. a few hundred thousand a year wow. um um and um and he still has a career at, he has a second career as a utility working in like the utility hedge fund space or whatever so wow uh, wow um uh, did he run? Didn't he run for president this last time? Like, like, briefly. yeah, for one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all of his campaign contributions were from electric utilities. Just saying. Wow. Um, wow. <clears throat> okay. um, you want to add? I don't know. I don't know if you guys are keeping yourselves informed. There's like a Western Mass Solar. Do you remember the name of it? There's a Shootsbury like Solar something or other. But they've Is got that Weisenbaum thing um i'm not weisenbaum I'm, i'm not familiar i i haven't gone deeply deeply into it but there's there's a i'll see if i can find a link to send you guys there's a good story of a family in haydenville that had a bit of a, a situation that it just feels like we're perilously on the side of you know as the waters here they're it was good they sent them over in the other direction for us. I have no idea what's happening on the other side of the water, but definitely we've got channels that are happening. You know, it's just, there's a lot of layers of impact that the land is suffering from this. Yeah. Yeah, and the nightmare- an industrial site. The I nightmare guess. story in Williamsburg where the AG, uh, the, yeah, the AG sued the company for 1.6, million dollars it was a, it was a ecological disaster you know that's kind of thing up and, and i don't think we're in danger of that right now well anyway. that that brief movie that the people put out was that in williamsburg oh. i think we anyway, the same very watch that and see you know, and to see the erosion did you know erosion plan i think in place here yeah but yeah that's that know. movie that that movie that's sharon wise so she she's a, she's a friend of mine she's in amherst um right by the reservoir when the back end the, the nice end of amherst um and, <laughs> um and she, she's she's all about this issue and is going all about getting people yeah uh informed about the slipshod way that solar is hap is sort of going in everywhere and um well you know, there's I, some like vote coming up very soon where town that's about towns having access to regulate solar that's yeah. coming to vote like if in the next two days um eight house so, i don't know yeah that's a, and that's not that's not just about who's going to have the power to regulate it's um, who 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 collects the fees as well and um so you know the, as you know you guys know the town gets a payment in lieu of taxes from them and um part part of that is the state moving in on that and wanting that revenue hmm. source as well so wow. um so yeah i mean yeah it's been a huge wake-up call and um you know it is a learning experience I'll learn from this and and i feel like the more we communicate to to you guys and to the town and make it part of the public record you know the better it is for everyone i mean that's the only thing we can do here is to kind of try to find some way to transmute this experience that we've had into a benefit for other people and you know hopefully um that's what can come of this so thank you for affording us some time yeah thank you Thank you. Yes. Um, no, no, just to, norm, normally the speaker's limit would be far shorter than this on a public comment, but um, you being so the generous. only Thank you, being, you. you being the only members of the public to speak, I thought that would be rather, uh, I don't know, pointless as well. So, um, 
Very kind of you. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so thanks, and we, you know we'll we'll do what we can, which as usual is probably not enough, but you know still. We really appreciate all you guys do. Yeah, thanks a lot, and you see thanks. it. Sorry, you might feel hidden some a lot of times, probably, but thank you for your hidden, support. invisible sometimes. But yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. you know the other side of hidden. <laughs> yes, actually, but sometimes that's good. That's what you want. You want people just to think their stuff works. They don't gotta worry about it. You know, it's one. So that's what we try. That's what yeah. I try. All right. Thanks, thank guys. You. Have a wonderful night, you all. You too. You too. Thanks again. Thank all right. Town Administrator update. Um, okay, very quick update. Um, we have had our first cyber security awareness training has already begun. So everybody that has a townofconway.com account should have gotten uh, an email that basically is a preliminary assessment test to find out they're, they're gonna do this test in the beginning and the test at the end. And hopefully we will have all learned something so that our performance is much better at the end than it was in the beginning. I'm certainly hoping mine will be. Um, and after that, we'll all have assignments, um, a, a sh an assignment which will be broken out into pieces or we can break out into pieces and then we'll get some random phishing tests. Uh, will they be by Zoom, those trainings? Um, they, come, they come in a link um, directly to the Town of Conway email and it's, it has a special um, code just for you. So nobody else can click on that link that will take you to the, the information. Um, Phil and I had a meeting uh, with our new MEMA representative, Chris Morrison, who was really extremely helpful in giving us um, information and kind of next steps on updating um, our uh, Conway's emergency preparedness protocols and documents and that kind of thing. So he was really great to meet. And I've already had some feedback that the latest Conway occurrence is out. Gosh, bless Louise for having, and, and the entire team, but um, She's the one who does all the printing and the mailing. So, um, and you know, in my front column, I had mentioned that I um, to get some comments about the transfer station. I've already had some new residents who have requested either a Facebook and or a Twitter so that you know we could tweet something about um, if something's going on with the transfer station. So we might. You know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> so we could we could put maybe uh, on an agenda on a future night, um, you know, different ideas for how to get the information out. Cause I know there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, again, I wish I just knew how, what was the best way for everybody because some people don't even have computers or cell phones. So right. they really have to be called. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm yeah. hoping people will pay attention to this and I'm gonna try to put in every month in the currents, please, please, please sign up because we can't, we can't call you if you don't sign up to be called or contacted. Anyway, so that was my yeah. update. <laughs> my little. <Yeah. laughs> no, and, and, and I, the, the the next thing is select board concerns, which is sort of just piggybacking on that, which is um, that's really important is to get people to register their name, their numbers. Um, we try the transfer station was. Uh, the other so last Sunday, the, the 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 first night that it went to like ten below, the trash compactor uh, uh, popped a sprocket or some such thing, and uh, um, actually it was an electrical issue. But anyway, it stopped working, and for one day there there wasn't the ability to deal with people, the less whatever. But people need you needed we needed to put the information out there that mm -hmm. hey you can't you can bring your recyclables but not your actual garbage um mm -hmm. and uh, so and we yeah and and to, to me i get oh, the, sending that the the, the voice mail to everybody that's like pretty intrusive and you're only supposed to do that in real emergencies and um because you you really want people to pick up the phone and listen to that and if too many of these messages don't apply to the people, then then they won't pick up when it's a real, real emergency. And so, so the idea of like sending text out to people to me sounds a lot better. It's like less intrusive. And um, um, but when we we did that, we sent the text out to townwide text, and there was only a hundred, a little over a hundred text numbers, 
And of those, only 60 were still valid. And yeah, there so, were a lot of people who had like, because that's what I heard. That like, well, I live in coal rain now, and I and I still got the text about the Conway dumping. Coal. Yeah. So that's part of it. Like that's part. There, there's no way to weed out those old numbers. Nobody calls us up and says that's not my number anymore. And we can say, hey, register your number, but they're in the system, and I don't know whether there's any way to get, get well, them. But some of the solutions that we've looked at for the town website, they include um, some of those services like signing up for, you know, alerts like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we can do that as well. One of the things I'd like to promote is having um, and with with a website redo, having just one spot where people know that they can sign up for the news about all these different topics so that they can choose what they want. But again, not everybody has an email. So for the people who only have phones and wish to be notified by phone, I mean, there's got to be a better way for us to figure out. Um, I'll look on Blackboard again, because if there's some way that we can we can make up, I'm, I'm sure there must be, but we could make up lists. I want to be notified for the transfer station. Yes. And I could make a separate list that's just for those people. Absolutely. We know we're not disturbing them because they've already said they want to get that information. So, but they still have to sign up. So, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, but I think actually handing out a handout at the transfer station is probably the best way to approach that because they're there. And I'm sure the guys up there would be happy to hand out. Sheet saying here, this is what you want to do. You want to get notified, you can do this, this, or this, you know, and we'll then we'll let you know. You can just have like a simple website like townaconway.com slash dump, like open yeah. or closed, open or closed. <laughs> so people like you know, business cards, like <laughs> check there first before you go. Right. That would, yeah. Right. That would actually be really easy to engineer. <laughs> <laughs> it appeared to me that the dump got fixed really quickly, much more quickly than. Well, I they thought. didn't know there was. They didn't know what it was. To be honest with you, when the when the repair people went up, it was working, and then um, we had somebody look because I've been told that there were heaters for the oil in the compactor, which they thought first they thought it was the chip. We were told it was the chip. Well, it wasn't. Yeah. The chip. Yeah, and it wasn't. Yeah. It was not. No. And then, then we were, you know, we thought, well, okay, maybe it's so cold and that's keeping the hydraulic, um, you know, it's freezing it up, but there are heaters for that oil and they were working. So honestly, we, we don't, there's, it, not sure, not sure. But it's working now. But it's working now and it's and just- no one fixed it? And no one fixed it. I, well, I, well, I thought two people came to fix it. <laughs> I just, everything stopped working for me when it got like super cold. Like just things that like you would think had nothing to do with the cold. Like suddenly like, nope, not working. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just going to wait for the sun to come up. I'm going to wait for it to warm up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. New it's England. True. <laughs> it's true. We had some cold ones. So, but apparently this is like a regular thing. This, the trash compactor once a year spit in the bit um just in in a real cold you know on uh, over the cold so um yeah so but, it is good to be able to get the word out yeah sure so we should investigate that how yeah. to make that more clear yeah yeah so um all right hey uh, i have a good news mail message if we're up to mail yet sure yes we are so I got a very nice note from a guy who lives on the Williamsburg Road end of Conway, who um, who was writing about a favor or a, a good deed that got done to him by a Conway plow driver, oh. who, who, who uh, in the act of plowing, noticed that he had plowed up some big ice blocks and some of them were covering the driveway and he stopped the truck and he got out and he moved them all and, and it made made a Conway resident feel very kindly towards the Conway road crew. Yay for the Conway road crew. So he sent that to Ron also. So Ron okay. did get, get that note. Good. Yeah, they like they like the occasional compliment. Yeah. I, know that. yeah. I guess we all do. Yeah. They do a uh, good job. Yeah. So that's... That's nice. We had some other mail, didn't we? I don't remember. Uh, no, we didn't. All right, good. 
Good. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, any announcements? Um, then, okay, our next our next meeting is one week from today, February seventh. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes. All right. How is it possible tomorrow is February 1st? Yeah. Yeah, it just that thing's going to be wrong. It's got to be the 6th. <laughs> it's Monday. It's next Monday. That's when our next meeting is. No, you're 6th. right. You were right. It's the 7th. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. So I move to adjourn this meeting until next. Yay. Uh, vote aye. 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 See you next Thank you. Good night, everybody. Nice to Thank see you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.